Today's lesson is uh, 1-7, and you can see that we're going to be talking about transformations in the plane. So my goal for you today, as you can see in my objectives, is I want you to be, uh, be able to identify uh, the really three types of transformations that we're going to talk about today, uh, reflections, translations, and rotations. And that'll be the first part of our lesson. And then we're going to look at how to calculate the coordinates of the vertices of the images after these transformations have taken place. So uh, let's get started. First of all, we'll uh, identify some terminology. And uh, we can fill in the blanks of our first term here, a transformation. is a function that maps a figure, and that figure, before any transformation has taken place, is called the pre-image, onto a new figure called the image. So after performing whatever transformation has been called for, we now have the image. A transformation can change the position, the size or the shape of a figure. All right, and then I, I have an example here for you. A transformation can be noted by using an arrow. So let's just take my example here. Uh, this is actually an example of a particular type of transformation called a translation. And we'll talk more about this in detail in just a moment, but uh, to give you a little preview, a translation is really, you could think of the word slide or move. So originally we had this, uh, as I've said here, we have this original figure, uh, this triangle called ABC. The arrow indicates that it has been shifted or we slid it or we moved it. They're all synonymous terms for we translated it to this shape or this other triangle. It literally was moved from one place to another. And so we would have called this the pre-image, and then this is the image. And so here's some language that you'll see used in reference to uh, these transformations, like translations. Triangle ABC is mapped to, that's what this arrow indicates, and in particular, point A is mapped to point X, Point B is mapped to point Y. They correspond, in other words, point C is mapped to point Z. And you may also see this. I'll just go ahead and throw this out. Uh, you'll, depending on the textbook, you may see it written as this. Uh, when A is the pre-image, the image would be A prime. A little symbol there. It looks like an apostrophe. We, we read it as A prime. And then B when it's translated, it becomes B prime and then C prime. So I uh, just want you to be aware it could be uh, they're both correct. It's just the preference of, you know, the problem or the textbook. I just want you to be ready in either case. But it does, it is true that these original points map to a new location, in this case a translation, a pre-image translates over to an image. Okay, so once again, we'll run through the three types of transformations that we'll be discussing. We've basically already talked about a translation, so let me just go ahead and cover that one first. Uh, we said that you could think of the word slide. So here's an example of triangle ABC being moved, all the points on it are shifted. So you'll know that a translation has taken place if the original image or the image really is in its same position, basically. In other words, it's not flipped over, it's not upside down, it's not turned sideways. This triangle ABC is still down here in the same basic upright position, if you want to think of it that way. All that has happened is every point on ABC has been moved to create a new triangle called STR. So it's a movement without turning or flipping the original figure. It's literally just a move or a slide. All right, then we talk about reflections. 
a reflection, you can think of the word flip. So here's a perfect example. Um, this left side triangle called MPR has been picked up and flipped over the y-axis to create this other triangle called TVS. Okay, And so we say that the y-axis served as a line of reflection here. So when you're picking a figure up and flipping it over a line, whether that's the y-axis or sometimes it's the x-axis, that's called a reflection. And we have a line of reflection. And for us, that's either going to be the x or the y-axis. And then finally, uh, the final transformation that we will deal with in this lesson is called a rotation. And that's where we turn an object around a particular point and that point is called the center of rotation. So in this particular example, that would be the point negative one, one. And all of our rotations for us will take a, an image, pre-image, I should say. Our pre-image will be rotated counterclockwise around a point. So those are going to be the movements. When we do a rotation, it will always be a counterclockwise counterclockwise rotation around a particular point. So I just wanted you to see an illustration of what a reflection is. That's when we flip over an object. A translation is just a slide from one place to another. And then a rotation is a turn around a particular point. All right, so let's talk about, uh, these are some examples that you're going to do in your homework. The first few problems, you're really just identifying the type of transformation. You'll see the word rigid transformation, but uh, your choices here are reflection, translation, or rotation. And some of these could be more, uh, you'll see in just a minute, uh, some of these moves can incorporate two or maybe all three of these. So let's just take a look at example number one. Uh, you notice that the triangle on the left, we could call this the pre-image, and the triangle on the right, um, it's really, it hasn't been turned. It hasn't been flipped over. Uh, if it were flipped over the y-axis, then we should have uh, another matching uh, triangle over here, but we don't. And if it were flipped over the x-axis, we should have a matching triangle up here, which we don't. So um, you can see, hopefully, that this is a translation. This is a slide from one point, actually all the points on the triangles are being moved to this new location, uh, triangle ABC. So this is called a translation. All right, so for number two, um, you notice that um, these two shapes really represent mirrored images over the x-axis. Uh, one way I think you can spot, this is a reflection. Um, one way to spot a reflection is, can you fold right in between the two shapes? So let's just say we were able to take this piece of paper and fold on the x-axis. And you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit, but if you can fold on a line right in between the two shapes, and that fold would cause these two shapes to map on top of each other, or in other words, they would be right on top of each other, then you know that you have a reflection, and that's what number two is. So that would happen here. If I fold it on the x-axis, can you see that, for example, this point, when it's folded, would come down here and fall here? And this point, of course, would match this one. All right, so that's an example of a reflection. And then number three is an example of a rotation. Um, you can't flip over. You can't flip one over and get the other one. There is no line of reflection. Uh, this isn't just taking the green, for example, and sliding it to a new location because these points don't correspond. You can kind of tell that uh, this, this point right here, if it were a true translation, it still should be 
uh, in that same basic location on the on the image. But this point, you can tell, has been turned. So when the object, the original object, has been turned in any way, that's what we call a rotation. All right, down to number four. Um, hopefully you can see that the x-axis, again, serves as a line of reflection. So if you were to fold this graph on the x-axis and let these two sides come together, these two shapes would fall on top of each other. And that's what you have with a reflection. All right, number five, uh, that can't be true here. If I fold on the y-axis, these are not gonna match up. I'll have this shape over here and this one over here, so it can't be a reflection. Uh, rotation uh, would mean that I'm gonna turn this object, so it would not stay in this basic position. It would be turned some way. And so this is gonna be a translation. I'm literally moving this shape from one place to another. And then number six is uh, an example. It's kind of interesting. Um, we could think of this as a translation because I'm taking this basic shape on the left and I'm sliding it a certain number of units and it produces the shape on the right. So it's definitely a translation. And it's also a reflection because the y-axis, if you think about it, if you folded this graph paper right on top of the y-axis and allow these two halves of graph paper to come together, you would have these two shapes being mapped on top of each other. So it's also going to be a reflection. And then you notice that, hopefully you notice that if you were to turn this object, Maybe we start, well, the way it's pictured, we're going from the dark, or we're going from the light to the dark. So if you were to turn this object, rotate it around this particular point, uh, you're still going to end up with that same shape that you see there in black on the left. So here's an example of all three transformations being involved in this one example. All right, and so some of your homework will be identifying the type of transformation that's taking place. Sometimes you'll have more than one illustrated. Okay, so then part two of your assignment, uh, the instructions are gonna read like this. Find the coordinates of the figure with the given coordinates after the transformation on the plane. All right, so we're gonna be performing, you're gonna be given one of the transformations to perform, and then you're gonna to have to tell what would the coordinates be after that transformation has been performed on that image. And then you're gonna graph the pre-image and the image. All right, so we'll go through some examples of this. But first, um, this, this is information that you wanna to refer to when you're doing these problems. Um, the way we come up with these coordinates to reflect, sorry to use that word, but I guess to bring about the ordered pairs that result in a particular transformation. So what happens with a reflection, and I'm going to do a little example, so let me, let me just do a little sketch here. Hopefully my illustration here will help this make a little bit of sense. All right, so let's just say we have the coordinate plane and I'm gonna plot the point negative two, three on the coordinate plane. All right, okay, so the point that reflects this over the y-axis, let's just take the y-axis, the point that reflects it, in other words, it's gotta be the same distance away from the y-axis, okay, on the same horizontal line, that would be the point positive two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna call this my pre-image. Maybe I'll do a different color. Red will be pre-image and blue is gonna be image. 
Well, what happened from negative 2, 3, which was my pre-image, the original, I reflected it over the y-axis, and it became positive 2, 3. Well, that's what this is saying. So anytime you have a reflection in the y-axis, or you could think of over the y-axis, if you had these two, these were your ordered pairs in the beginning, the X only is going to change to the opposite sign after the transformation, the reflection has taken place. And that's what happened here. All right, I had negative 2, 3 in my image, pre-image, and then after reflecting, notice the two change signs. And that's really all this is saying. And that should always be true for a reflection in the y-axis. Notice the y's never change. It'll be the x's that change. Okay, let's use that same point and I'll change colors. And uh, let's say we reflect that point over the x-axis. So that means I'm gonna go down here. All right, I've gotta be the same distance away from the x-axis as this. So this is my pre-image and green is gonna represent the image, and this is a reflection over the X. Well, the red we've already established is the point negative two, three. The green is gonna be negative two, negative three. So this is describing what happens when you reflect on the X axis. The, if you look at the original points for the pre-image, and then compare that to what happens for the image after the reflection, Notice the Y coordinates have changed signs, and that's what has happened here. From positive three, I went to negative three. The X's did not change, okay? So that's really all that's saying. I just want to put a little context. Um, the more you practice this, the easier it gets, but it, it really boils down to this. If you're reflecting on the X or over the X axis, you're gonna have a change in the Y coordinates between the two all the Y coordinates are gonna change um, on the, from the pre-image to the image. And then if you have a reflection on the X, uh, or the Y axis, then the X coordinates are gonna change. All right, and then uh, a translation is really the easier of the three. Uh, this is the symbol for a vector, and you don't really have to know all the ins and outs of vectors yet. You'll get into those in Algebra 2 and in Pre-Calculus, but uh, just think of the, a vector as giving us direction and telling us how far to go. Uh, so if we have a point on the pre-image and it tells us to travel a, along a certain vector, then what that means is basically pretty easy math. We're going to add A to the x-coordinate of our pre-image, and then we're going to add B to the y-coordinate, and that will give us the image. Okay, so every point on the pre-image will be given will be given this vector, and, and I've given you kind of a formula, and we're going to practice this in just a minute. Okay, so for rotations, um, I'm going to come back to this slide, and we're going to fill in these ordered pairs, but I want to give you a little visual on the slides that follow. So give me just a minute, and I'm, I'm going to use this triangle just as an illustration and I want you to see the, the rotation counterclockwise around this coordinate plane. And I hope that helps you uh, see what happens to the ordered pair of this, what we would call the pre-image after rotations. Okay, so think of this as our pre-image. Now the next slide is gonna represent a 90 degree rotation. All right, so I'm going to keep the pre-image here just so you can see it. I'll put it in a dotted triangle. So that's where we were. That's the original. And I just took this and I rotated it 90 degrees. So notice this is a 90 degree angle. So the, the base of the triangle basically went 90 degrees. The whole triangle got rotated 90 degrees. But what I really want you to pay attention to is this ordered pair. All right, so I just picked one ordered pair to illustrate all. This is happening across the board. This ordered pair, 6, 3, after a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise, went here. 
All right, so I just want you to see that. And now we'll go back and we'll fill in the order pair blank that I had on this slide. So whenever you're doing a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, this is the pre-image after doing the rotation you notice that the X and Y coordinates really switch places. Okay, so I'm going to go back so you can see that. Do you see how they switched places? But something else happened also. Not only did the X, Y coordinates switch places, but in the image, the X coordinate now becomes opposite. Okay, so there's a change in sign of the X coordinate in the image. So we're going to go back and we'll just take a look at that. So we can uh, say it this way using our variables. So that original Y coordinate is going to come up here. These are going to switch, but the X coordinate of the image is going to change. All right. Just wanted you to get a visual of that. And I think um, if you look at this slide, it, it makes it obvious. Switch, switch the coordinates change the X coordinate sign after the switch. All right, so now uh, let's talk about the 180 degree rotation and I've got a, that same rectangle, but let's take a look at it rotating at 180 degrees. And so this one's a little bit easier to see. Uh, there's no switching of the X, Y coordinates from the pre-image to the image. They just each change their sign. So both positives after 180 degrees uh, rotation, they both become negative. So that one's pretty, I'll go back and we'll fill it in. That one's pretty easy to see. So this is the pre-image rotated 180 degrees results in these coordinates. Uh, they will take on that characteristic. And then finally, I wanted you to see the 270 degree. It's kind of like this, very similar. So here's the 270 degree rotation. So we started with this pre-image, rotated 270 degrees. All right, so uh, notice our original order pair. That's what we're tracking around counterclockwise. Uh, notice what happened. There is a switch, the X and Y switch, but notice the Y this time is gonna change. Okay, so we can go back and we can summarize this in our previous slide like this. All right, the X and Y switch places, but this new Y coordinate, unlike over here, the new X coordinate after the switch, you change the X. Well, over here, after you switch, you change the Y to its opposite. So if you follow, uh, I could have just, you know, given you these, uh, but I thought maybe actually seeing a visual uh, will help you remember. Um, I. At the worst, at the least, you need to memorize those, but uh, hopefully if you maybe even have to sketch this out, use some sort of triangle uh, being rotated around, and that may help you remember how the ordered pairs on the pre-image, every one of the ordered pairs are going to change based on the three different types of rotations that we're going to be doing in this lesson. All right, so now let's do some examples. So um, the directions going back, we're supposed to, uh, we're going to end up graphing the original, which this represents, X, Y, Z represents the pre-image, but then we're told that it's translated along this vector. All right, so uh, let me just, I'll just go ahead and plot the points X, Y, and Z. So negative 9 sure I got my red, so let's see, negative 9 is right there. Negative 9, 4 is here, so that's x. Negative 9, negative 3 is here. Stray mark. That's y. And then negative 1, negative 3 is here. So we have this uh, triangle that will be our pre-image.
And by telling us that we're going to translate this, remember translation is just another word for slide or for move. And this vector gives us basically directions on the direction, how to go and how many to go, uh, which direction to go and how many. So uh, this four, I'll just show it like this. Uh, we're going to add four to each of the x coordinates. Okay, so negative nine plus four, negative nine plus four again, and then um, negative one plus four. All right, so if we do that, that'll give us the x coordinates of the image. So negative five, negative five, positive three. All right, so those are going to be x coordinates. And now we'll do the y's. All right, so we're going to add six to every one of the y's. Maybe I'll change the color to differentiate. Okay, so here are the y coordinates of the pre image four plus six, negative three plus six, again. All right, so this is going to be 10 y coordinate. This is going to be three. And this, of course, will be three as well. So uh, plotting these points, that will be the coordinates of our uh, image. So negative 5, 10. That's going to go off my graph just a little bit. I'll put it right there. Negative 5, 3. and 3, 3. All right, and so the blue will be the image. All right, and typically what, uh, what I'm used to seeing is if this was the pre-image, then these coordinates, these points represent the image x prime y prime and z prime all right and so that's how you take care of a translation uh, the first number of the vector you just add to each of the x coordinates of the pre-image and then the second number of the vector you add to the y coordinates and you come up with those new coordinates you plot them and that is a shift according to this vector. All right, let's do a reflection. Okay, so first we're going to plot the uh, points that we're given. So negative 3, 1. Negative 1, 1. And negative 1, 4. All right. I'll connect those, our pre-image. And we're supposed to do a reflection across the X or the Y axis. So remember, uh, going back to a previous slide, uh, when we do a reflection across the Y axis, then that's going to change the sign of all of the x coordinates. It's basically taking these and doing the opposite sign for all the x's, and the y's are going to stay the same. Okay, so my a prime will be positive 3, 1. b prime will be positive 1, 1. And c prime will be positive 1, 4. All right, let's just do that in blue. So 3, 1, and 1. Right. And I'll just label our points here. So A, C, 
So that makes this A prime, B prime, and C prime. All right, so we did a translation example, we did a reflection example, and now let's do a rotation example. All right, so a rotation of 270 degrees counterclockwise, it's going to do, it's going to take these original ordered pairs, and remember we switch the X and Y, and we're going to change the sign of what will be the Y coordinate of the image. Okay, so let's just go ahead and plot the pre image, negative 3, 0. It's Q. R is negative 2, 2. S is negative 1, 0. This little triangle. Okay, now let's do a rotation, and if we just apply this, so uh, Q prime, I switch these and then make the Y coordinate after switching positive. That's going to be Q prime. R prime, switch them. So when you do the switch, it would be 2, negative 2, but we're going to do the opposite, change the sign, so that makes it 2, positive 2. And then S prime, switch them, and then same thing. Instead of 0, negative 1, I'm going to make it 0, positive 1. All right, I'm going to plot those. 0, 3. Two, two, and zero, one, and that is going to be the rotation of that free image, a 270 degree rotation counterclockwise. And we'll finish that off putting the uh, coordinates. So, this memory, so you can kind of see R rotated around, so this is R prime. And Q prime, and then S prime. Okay, I think we have it. I hope I've given you enough to help you with the assignment. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, contact me. And I'll see you next time.